Praise the Lord. That hallelujah is too small for the final night. Praise the Lord. Tonight, God wants to complete what he started on Thursday. And whatever has not happened will happen tonight. Whatever has been your expectation, tonight the Lord will visit you in an extraordinary way. In the year 2016, it was in Bauchi State actually, there was this woman, August precisely, her father and the Lord held a crusade in Bauchi, just one day program, just one day, one Sunday morning. And there was this woman, totally mad, completely insane. And she was eating rubbish from dustbin for years, wearing rags, sleeping in the rain, in the sun, abandoned, forgotten by the family. And people kept passing that way, seeing her always carrying rags, carrying rubbish on her head. And publicity was made, and some good Samaritans went and carried that woman to the church. And while the man of God was praying, all of a sudden, everybody say, all of a sudden. All of a sudden. This woman said, who put these rags on me? She began to speak normally, acting normally, talking normally, and she started removing. Then some sisters came around and put wrappers on her. I witnessed it with my eyes. I went to visit her myself in her house when she was rehabilitated. Tonight, that same God that did it, we do it for you tonight. Finally, in the year 2017, that was in Taraba actually, August again. Today is your own August. Yeah. Our Father in the Lord came, and this sister, a committed sister in the church, she had a daughter that the womb had been removed by doctors just to save her life. And he told her that she was not going to deliver again because the womb was removed. And the sister said, God, there's nothing you cannot do. And tonight, the mercy of God will reach you. Amen. There is nothing God cannot do. Amen. The sister was far away in another, the daughter was far away in another state, but the mother raised up her hand for her. Anybody who raised up hand for tonight will receive the touch. And simple, straightforward prayer was prayed. After that, the woman that the womb was removed far away in another state took in. Now she is carrying that baby. The baby is growing. I spoke with her myself and with the husband. And that same God is here tonight. I want you to rise up and join me to welcome this same man of God with extraordinary, exceeding anointing, Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumui. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. We're excited here tonight. Yeah. Now, Pastor, the, that woman that was healed, having mental problem, derage, insane, picking things on the street, on the road, eating all those things, wearing rags, when the power of the Lord came and she was healed, delivered totally. 
not only the pastor the pastor said that he visited her if i remember correctly people from around the town let me go and see let me go and see pastor am i right looks like my brain is the brain of a teenager and today as the power of the lord will come upon you miracle will happen healing will happen deliverance will happen people will come and see you maybe they will take your photograph and send it to me at the headquarters i will see you with miracle with salvation with healing with deliverance father in the mighty name of jesus we thank you tonight and bless your name and lord we pray that today you manifest your power you manifest your almighty miracle working power and everyone here tonight will receive in jesus name extraordinary explosive miracle explosive manifestation of the power of god in every life in jesus name salvation tonight forgiveness tonight freedom tonight healing tonight recovery tonight lord we pray there will be a manifestation from heaven confirm it lord in every life in jesus name i pray god bless you you can sit down tonight as we come to the final night for this november gck the lord has done quite a lot of things he has saved he has forgiven he has set free he has turned lives around for the better he has healed he has delivered he has set free now we want to see that we continue in the love of god continue in the salvation of the lord continue in the mercy of the lord continue in all that the lord has done remember is the power that never fails the grace that never fails the name that never fails the word that never fails and the mercy now that never fails tonight we're looking at the continual mercies of our ever compassionate maker he is our maker he is our creator he is our redeemer he is the lover of our souls and he is the resurrection power for every soul and he does that by his compassion he does that by his mercy he does that by his love the love that never fails the name that never fails and the mercy the compassion that never never fails the continual mercies of our ever compassionate maker i'm reading to you from first peter and we're looking at chapter one verse three first peter chapter one reading from verse three blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ which according to his abundant mercy mercy the mercy that saves the mercy that heals the mercy that delivers and the mercy that works supernatural miracle in every life abundant mercy inexhaustible mercy the mercy that never fails from his abundant mercy he has begotten us again born again begotten again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of jesus christ from the dead and then in verse 4 he says to an inheritance incorruptible 
undefiled and that fadeth not away reserved in heaven for you then he tells us in verse 5 it says who are kept by the power of God it's one thing to be saved but then to be kept in that salvation it's one thing to be redeemed but to be kept in that redemption it's one thing to be forgiven and to become the righteousness of God in Christ and to be kept in that righteousness it's one thing to be free from sin with an instantaneous miracle working power of God and then to be kept free 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 completely in your spirit in your soul and in your body who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation ready to be revealed in the last time the Lord will keep you Amen. keep you in salvation and keep you in your healing and keep you in your deliverance look at romans chapter 12 i'm reading from verse 1 in romans chapter 12 verse 1 i beseech you therefore because of the mercy of god i beseech you therefore brethren by the mercies of god that she present your bodies a living sacrifice holy acceptable unto god which is your reasonable service. It says now you have been in the service of sin, and you have been in the service of Satan, and you have been in the service of self, the selfishness, the self-centeredness, the self-will. You had committed your life to that before. But now he says, now you are saved. Now you are born again. Now you become a new creature in Christ. That now you present your body. What does that mean? My body, I present. What it means is everything your body can do from your heart, your soul, your mind, your hands, what your hand can do, good works. And what your legs can do, walking for the Lord. And everything, your sight, your ears, every part of your body that has now received the healing virtue of the Lord. You present that unto the Lord as a living sacrifice, holy, without sin without evil, without the past, bad habits anymore, acceptable unto God. And that is your reasonable service. And then he says in verse 2, in verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, the world of defilement, the world of disobedience, the world of rebellion, the world of evil, the world of transgression, that now you were with them before, drinking what they were drinking, smoking what they were smoking, saying what they were saying, and dancing their dancing too, and doing everything they were doing in their nightclubs. But now he says, You're saved, you're born again, and because you are saved and born again, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good as you continue in the grace of God, as you continue in the love of God, as you continue in the life of godliness, then you will prove every day God is good in your life. And when you follow the Lord and your life represents and reflects the gospel, your life represents and reflects the goodness of God, heaven will shine on you. The power of the Lord will shine on you and you will prove, you will know, you will experience day after day that good, acceptable, and the perfect will of God. Amen in your life. Amen, Amen every day. Amen. The continual mercies of our ever 
compassionate maker. Three things we're looking at. Number one, redemption and full salvation through God's unmerited mercy. Number two, recovery from frightful sicknesses through gracious unceasing mercies. Number three, righteousness of faithful saints through guarded unadulterated mercies in your life. Number one, number one, redemption and full salvation through God's unmerited mercy. Redemption. <clears throat> redemption, what does that mean? You're being in the slave market. You're being in bondage. You were actually tied down in that slavery. But now, the Redeemer, his name is Christ. Redeemer, Savior, Healer, Sanctifier, the one who purifies our lives, Purifier, the refiner, the one that takes us up and he turns our lives around now that you are redeemed. He also wants to, you to have not only uh, partial salvation. I was smoking uh, three packets of cigarettes before. Now I only smoke uh, one packet partial. He wants you to have full salvation and full redemption and full freedom. He wants you in your life, in the private and in the public. Anywhere you are, the things you were addicted to before. He comes as your deliverer. He comes as your redeemer and he breaks every yoke and destroys everything and he gives you full salvation through God's of merited mercy. In Exodus chapter 15, looking at verse 13, it says, Thou in thy mercy hast led forth the people which thou hast redeemed. Thou hast guided them in thy strength unto thy holy habitation. You see there, it's by the mercy of God that the children of Israel were redeemed. And for us today is that same mercy of God that redeems us. Look at how that mercy works in our life, works in every life, and how that mercy of God will work in your life. In Psalm 51, reading from verse 1, Psalm 51, verse 1, have mercy upon me you see it's not by marriage forgiveness not by marriage freedom not by marriage salvation not by marriage full salvation not by marriage it says have mercy upon me O god according to thy loving kindness according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies blot out my transgressions when you're saved and when you're forgiven all your transgressions everything blotted out fully entirely completely totally he blots out everything look at verse 2 in verse 2 it says wash me thoroughly from my iniquity sorrow washing that he cleanses you he washes you and all the defilement of the past all the waywardness of the past all the sinfulness of the past he washes everything away and claims me from my sin verse 3 tells us it says for i acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me verse 4 says against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear 
when thou judges then in verse 5 it says behold i was shapen in iniquity the iniquity was in him in me in everyone from the point of conception because the father the mother and then the great the uh, grandfather and the grandmother and the great great grandfather and adam and eve when you go down the line it says the unclean can 